we're about to embark on the ultimate road trip across Flores Island in Indonesia. Most people visit Flores to see the famous Komodo dragons, but there's so much more to the island. With only 11 days and a small scooter, we're going to try and explore as much of this island as possible. From breathtaking hidden gems, unique natural wonders and some dangerous challenges along the way, we can't wait to get on the road and discover this underrated island in Indonesia. It's day one of the road trip and we've just left Loban Bajo. We've got about a three hour drive today. For most of this trip we're going to be driving along the Trans Flores Highway which is the main road across Flores from one end to the other. Really good road and loads of beautiful views along it as well. Loads of friendly faces, loads of people smiling and waving. And we have actually just arrived at our first stop. I'm in these beautiful rice fields right now. It's called the Spiderweb Rice Fields. You probably won't understand that name from looking at it from here, but from above, it's a completely different story. It's absolutely beautiful. If you head up to the viewpoint nearby, you can see the spider webs for yourself. So basically the rice fields are kind of shaped like spider webs. And this wasn't actually on purpose. Locals didn't do this for any reason at all, apart from the fact that villagers have different sized pieces of land. And basically it just ended up that the way they divided up the land, it just looked like a spider web because some people have larger plots of land, some people have smaller ones, and it's absolutely beautiful. What a great first stop on our trip so far. The boys come to look at the views on the drone. A really peaceful area. Look at the mountains. A beautiful house over there in the traditional Flores kind of style. There's going to be a lot of houses looking like this here on this island. We've just arrived in Rateng, which is the village or town really. It's quite big that we're staying in tonight. And I think we're at the homestay. I'm not sure which one it is. Not sure where. We're actually Sorry. really high up in the mountains though right now. Yeah. It was raining a little bit before. Okay, okay. Very much I see. Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, I see the name. Yeah, okay. Coletta Homestay. Hello. It's driving. Wow. Looks nice. Look at these sunflowers. Hello. Hi. <laughs> right, let's see if anyone's home. Coletta Homestay. That's us for tonight. I love that it's not right in the town center. It was a little bit busy, a little bit hectic. And here's like nice and local vibe. Hello. 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 I book online. Yeah. Olivia. Olivia. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Bye. Yeah, we're oh, driving okay. from Labuan Bajo. Labuan Bajo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is your room. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, wow. Ah, simple room. Very nice, very, very big. big. Yeah. yeah, very big. Yeah, and um, over there, toilet. Okay, perfect. Oh, great. Got a big window in here. It's a huge window. To the mountain. She's showing us a local varong to have some lunch. Because we didn't eat yet today. Varong means restaurant. I would have never guessed myself or on Google Maps how to find this place. <laughs> Only locals know. Not sure, what is it? Clove. Ah, oh, it's clove. Ah, look at a massive coffee bean in here, guys. <laughs> Huge. Oh, they put it in a cigarette. Clove. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the Indonesian, uh, have the the clove kind of smell, like balsamic and aromatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. The leaves also you can use as medicine. We made it. Let's eat. Absolutely starving. The food's already here. We ordered like a basic local soup and there's some fried rice coming in. So. Yeah. Make sure you get some of that sambal. That's the main thing in here. Looks pretty spicy. Yeah, maybe just try, yeah. Ooh, Let me try the, the sambal. I've already added some. I hope I didn't just add too much. Yeah, it's proper local. Spicy, so watch out. I love it though. After a really nice drive from our place to this beautiful, beautiful villages, like the people were so lovely, and I mean, we couldn't just stop filming. There was so nice actually we felt so welcome here and i've just gotten to the hobbit cave and apparently this is where they found the, the remains of homo floriensis apparently there were a type of human that has only just been discovered that wasn't homo sapiens i've been watching a little bit of the commentaries last night to just have a little bit of like inspiration a bit of an idea there used to be 
really, really small sort of humans, the Homo floriensis, which was around three foot tall, so really, really tiny, like a really small skull as well. In this area, found the fossil of uh, Homo floriensis. Okay. Here, and uh, animal bones, elephant bones, Komodo dragon, marabou. Is marabou the big, big bird? Yeah, very tall. Okay, how yeah. big? Uh, one meter and seventy one... centimeter wow. tall. Yeah. Wow, so like a big tall human, yeah. tall a bird. Wow. And a giant rat. And yeah. giant, how big is the rat? Rat, uh, yeah, like cat. Wow, <laughs> imagine finding yeah. rats like cats. Yeah. Yeah, like cats. Six meters down, we can the skeleton. Six meters? Yeah, six meters. So deep. Two, 2003. They found everything and they finished the... Not the finished. No, not finished. And now, archaeology... Uh, research in Bajawa. But the entry to the Hobbit cave is about 20,000 which is just about one pound or, or just over a dollar so it's really not much yeah and the guy explained us a little bit of what's happening here the archaeology kind of knew some of the facts but not entirely everything and it's kind of nice to have someone actually explaining yeah. it to you and there's actually a museum down there we can go and see now as we were leaving the cave we stopped off at this bridge because the views here are just amazing we literally have the rice fields the river, loads of little houses around here. People just live in here. And then down here in the river, there's people swimming. To be honest, I quite like to dip, a dip in there too. It looks really, really nice and refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Ow, it's really slapped me. <laughs> the most common phrase we've heard so far here on Flores Island is Hi miss! Hi miss! Hi miss! Yeah, what about me? Nobody cares about Mario. No hi mister, no nothing. We just drove back from the Hobbit cave, absolutely amazing views. We're back into our homestay and uh, a local man in here just offered us some coffee. And basically this coffee right here, you said that you grow yourself in the garden, right? Yeah, this is my, from my garden. Wow, pretty good, right? Flores Give it a coffee. test. I've heard Flores coffee is good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's crazy how the coffee is actually grown right here in the garden. In Europe, coffee can only come from a supermarket. There is no chance you're going to get it in the market or not even talking about getting it in, in your own garden, which is pretty impressive, man. <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try one from uh, try. so. Mmm. Mm. And something like sweet. Have peanut inside. Yeah. Mm, wow. <laughs> So a few hours later, it is the evening now. We totally forgot to vlog our dinner. Uh, we just really had this amazing meal here in Carleta's guest house. We leave a link in the description below of this video of each location where we're staying. But yes, right now it's evening time, I'm kind of ready to go to sleep. It's cold up here. I didn't know it was going to be cold anywhere on this trip, so we didn't bring our fleeces. So all I've got is a raincoat and a blanket, which I'm definitely going to be using tonight. First day in Flores. What can I say? It's a really, really beautiful place. The people are so friendly. The lo locations are just mind blowing. So far, day one was incredible. And I really hope that it's going to be like this every single day. Just had a lovely feeling breakfast uh, about to set up for our road trip. Cannot recommend more Carleta Homestay if you ever staying here in this area. What's the name of this town again? Rutang. Rutang, there you go. Tell yeah, I, names I know. Uh, it's too early in the morning. But yeah, yesterday and this morning we had this coffee. It was really, really good. So we asked for a little bit of the coffee as well because they grow it here in the garden. Take with us. Take away. Yeah, because the tired mornings we're going to have on this trip. Yeah, because we drink coffee literally every single day. Multiple times. So this is the vanilla from your own yeah, I'm grown garden? Yeah. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Instantly the smells. As soon as she opens the <laughs> box, I can smell it right away. Wow. Can I touch it? Oh yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Wow, look at this. Interesting. Wow, proper yeah. organic vanilla right here in Flores. It doesn't smell as strong as when you maybe so, there's a process to maybe, make it. Maybe yeah. So yeah, so yeah, you later maybe. you like sort of grate it, like ground it. How do you make it? Uh, uh something. there is plant, vanilla plant, and when the season to harvest it, we cut and dry it. Ah, that's where all the resin is okay, of the vanilla. So, so like right. The, yeah. The so inside is. This there. is what. Th so this is the part that you actually use for cooking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, that makes sense. Mm, yeah. It tastes like <laughs> vanilla. Nice. <laughs> it definitely tastes like vanilla. Hi, thank you. Bye bye. Back on the road. Today we're heading to Bajawa. Today I'm wearing all long sleeves, long pants because it was quite cold up there. But as soon as we started descending from the mountain, instantly the temperature has changed, all the plants looking more dry, brown. That's probably because we're not so high up. But the good thing is that we're at the beach. I mean, I mean, look at this. Look at this beautiful volcanic looking mountain. And there's absolutely no people in here. It's just me and Olivia right now. This road trip is just starting to get better and better. Now we're at the coast. Ah, <laughs> man. It looks unbelievable. It's pretty hot though, isn't it? Yeah, really hot. Probably gonna, gonna get going in a moment. A bit of a traffic jam. Hello. The pig's like, <laughs> you're not gonna catch it. Right, you're right. Oh, it's trying to bite him. It's trying to bite him. Hey, you got the pig. <laughs> we could just smell this fermented kind of smell in the air, and then we realized we've gone past where we wanted to stop, which is the Arak Distillery, local moonshine. And I just saw some people just brewing it there, like in a good mood. I can smell it. Oh, wow. The smell is literally coming through. Just following our noses. Yeah. <laughs> this lady just told us it's over here. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's what it is. It smells can strong. It, yeah, it smells pretty strong. Mm. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello. Oh, thank you. So is this the Arak? Yes. Yeah. This is the traditional well, bamboo well, way of making the arrack. Yeah. It's really interesting to see. Uh, look at these spots. Looks interesting. With like bamboo on the other side. So this is probably where the steam comes out. This is the arrack, I think. I feel like the arrack drips down there. Is this what it's made from? I'm not sure. It's co coconut. Uh, like, a, like a young coconut or something. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Translate. I think Mario's trying to buy some. Once in a lifetime, right? You gotta try it right where they're making it. Actually smells a little bit like jackfruit, so I'm not entirely sure what they're putting in there, but it really does smell like jackfruit. It smells so good. Taste, taste, taste. Okay, okay, taste. Okay, okay. Let's test it out. That's the local Arak. Okay. Wow, smells strong, man. Do they know what percent? Ooh. Proper strong, but like, kind of smells, tastes like clean, you know? You should totally try a little bit. Strong? A little bit. Like vodka strong or like? It's like sort of like lao lao, but not as strong, maybe. It's kind of like nice. It has like this nice aroma. It smells good. Damn it, love. <laughs> <laughs> It burns the li your lips the moment it touches yeah. them, but you don't really feel it much as it goes down. It just the first initial like taste is really yeah. It, it goes down hot. nicely afterwards. It's very hot. Yeah. But very smooth. I want to know what percent this is. Forty-five. Yeah. Forty-five. Oh, oh. Wow, very strong, eh? So it's like a yeah, like a real, real strong, strong whiskey yeah, or yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. Really, really strong. Yeah. Like, I'm already feeling it. <laughs> okay, I want the little bottle for me. Mario's already smashed it. Wow. My head's already spinning, still have to drive, you know? <laughs> but yeah, we got a, a bottle to take away, that's for sure. Just pretty cheap, to be honest. And the whole experience in here, like seeing how locals actually brew it, instead of, you know, getting it from like a shop in a village, you actually see the process in here. So it's quite interesting, you know, just on the way, literally on the main road, it's not a bit of a, it's not a big, my mouth is already like not working. It's not a detour, it's just on the main road. So it's a really good pit stop, you know, have a little bit of a rock and continue your road trip. Make sure it's continue not too much. Continue your road trip. <laughs> Let's hope not, we need to go for a soup. This Ara kind of hit me a little bit, not to the way, but I'm like drunk, but to the point where I'm like a bit tipsy actually. <laughs> I need a bit of soup before we go. We didn't have any lunch yet. Is this like a piece of tongue? Is it? it looks like it. Mm, probably. Each village and each restaurant has a different sambal completely. I like a lot of sambal. 
I like it spicy and the thing is I didn't even test it to see if it's spicy or like very spicy I might have ruined my soup right now but we'll see there's a lot of that sambal here <laughs> So we finished eating food and we took a 20 minute detour off the main road on a pretty bumpy path to Belaragi village which is a traditional village. There's many traditional villages across Flores. This is the first one that we're visiting on this trip. Looks pretty cool. Never seen anything like that in Indonesia before. Should we walk around a little bit? Let's go explore. Very beautiful, very beautiful, yeah. <laughs> You're saying hello to the lady in here, sitting here with a big smile. Everyone's kind of in a good mood in here. So it feels like we're not invasive. No, it's very quiet. There's not many people. I think they're all inside. It's really hot right now. So can understand that. Oh yeah. I can't believe that only 20 minutes drive from the Arag distillery, there's this village that feels ancient, you know, like you only see this in movies or documentaries and this is so close. And they still live like this in these super traditional houses. This is really incredible. They do have solar panels. I mean, fair play, you know, people want to have electricity. It makes sense. But like the way they still live it, like I feel like back in time right now. So under this hut, they have some really beautiful carvings, with like a mystical sort of face. You're making a big, big salad for the village, yeah. for all village. Oh, yeah. Wow, <laughs> it's a lot of food. From France? No, no, from Lithuania. England. England. England, yeah. Uh, Europe. Lithuania. Oh, Lithuania. Europe, Europe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like the, it's kind of spongy in flavor, right? We try and tie Yeah, we have tried similar things. Uh, that should be enough for the whole village, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Right, this is the house. Hello. 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 <laughs> Are you sleeping? <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. Write your name. Write something. Hello, Olivia. Olivia. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Aurelius. Nice to meet you. Yeah. How many people uh, live here? 100? Uh, 10? Oh. 50. 50. 50. Yeah, 50. 50. Wow. Oh, it's not so big. Are you working here today in the garden? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> It's very hot. Uh, very hot, eh? No, no. No, no. <laughs> no sir. Uh, uh, okay, okay. You're from country? Lithuania. Yeah? Lithuania? Lithuania, yeah. Uh, Europe. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, England? England. English. Yeah, yeah. English. English. I think we're just chilling with this yeah. family for a minute. Yeah, they were like, you should, guys, it's too hot. You're going to have some juice first before we go, which is amazing. <laughs> so chilling just here with the locals. Travels yeah. on toast. Got some palm juice to try. Oh, very sweet and sour yeah. at the same time. Mm. Yeah, it's like sugar cane, but with a bit sourness to it. Oh, nice. It's really ah. good. Thank you. Oh, Arak process. Ah, Arak. Yeah. How mm. oh, you make Arak? Yeah. I think ah, this is what okay. what that uh, Because with this you yeah. make Arak. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. I think okay. that's what that orange fruit was back yeah. at the Arak distillery. Aurelius is taking me to show his Arak brewery since Arak is pretty popular in the area. All right. So yeah, we've seen a similar one in a previous place and this is his own invention. So he's the Arak brewer in the village. He's the main man here who's brewing the Arak. Nice. Oh, it has quite a lot. Nice. The village does have fun in here. They have their own distillery, you know what I mean? They're living it up in here. And Aurelius is giving me some Arak to try as well. Oh, this one's different. Interesting. Wow, this one's very yum. Mm, very good, eh? Very, very sweet. Yeah, very, very nice. Very different to the other place that we had. We'll enjoy this Arak. And he'll have one as well. Oh. <laughs> good, good, good. They have some pigs in here as well. Big one with the babies. It no problem, be, yeah. Aurelius, I understand. No speaking, yeah. I understand everything. You're very good, very good, yeah. <laughs> Keep practicing. It's very good. I understand everything. Wow, and look at this like traditional carvings in the house. Very nice. You make this, Aurelius? You? 
Make the car? Yeah, my house. I, uh, I don't know. So this house who built you? No. No? no? Your father? Um, I'm father. Oh, the old father there yeah. who was making the salad. Ah, okay. okay. Hello. Namas haya, mamma mia. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Oh, okay, ah, okay. your name is mamma mia. <laughs> Hello. Hello, father. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, it's good. okay. Mario's flying the drone. Everyone's watching the village from above, which looks pretty cool. After our detour to visit the Belaragi village, we continued with our road trip, driving up through the windy mountain road to our next stop, Bajawa. Oh, finally, just got off the bike, absolutely shattered. Our asses are numb as hell. Yeah, so actually it's starting to fall asleep on the bike on that ride. Really tired after today. Too much sun, need a shower. Yeah. We're in Bajawa. <laughs> Let's go and check in. So this is our room for tonight. Simple room, bed, towels, desk to work at. The bathroom is over there and then make tea and coffee here not bad for the price I think paid maybe nine dollars I think it was one of the cheapest in this village in Bajawa includes breakfast as well <sighs> so glad to be here I feel like my face is a bit burnt sometimes when you're driving on the bike you don't even feel the Sun is burning you because there's a nice cool breeze and then my face is just absolutely burnt for sure Mario's arms are even worse. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Show me your hands though. It's look how, red, look yeah. how red. <laughs> and this is only day two. Wow. <laughs> I need to start applying some sunscreen. Pajava in the evening, looking pretty lively. There's quite a lot of people, quite a lot of, a lot of action and quite a lot of restaurants as well. It's which way we're going right now. I'm absolutely starving. Hello, how are you? Hello. You okay? Hello. Overall, Pajava doesn't look too big. It's kind of like a mountain village slash town. Yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna get a bit cold tonight as well. We had a shower before it got too cold. Feeling fresh, ready to have some delicious food. But yeah, I quite enjoy that it's kind of cold at night because yeah. I sleep better, you know? When it's like super tropical, hot, it's hard to sleep. This one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably go upstairs. It's really cute. Yeah, really nice food have arrived as you can see we're just gonna smash this and probably go and rest Olivia still has a bit of teaching to do tonight and like we need to like render and edit all the videos and stuff like that catch up and probably have a super early night tonight because we're absolutely tired is she telling us about something? I think she's asking for money yeah. Not sure what she's saying. <laughs> she's smiling, so I'm guessing it's a good she's thing. She's happy now, okay. Yeah. Day three in Flores begins pretty cool. We're heading to see oh, yeah. okay. the famous mountain area here in this area. Not doing too much driving today, which is quite nice for a change. A little bit of a chill day today. So as we were walking up, we realized all the clouds were coming in over the mountain. So we've lifted up the drone and yeah, can't really see the mountain anymore. It's about half past 10. Uh, probably a bit better to come earlier if you want to see it. There is another viewpoint that's perfect for sunset, which we're going to head to later instead and hopefully capture the mountain. <laughs> So we just drove for over a half an hour from Bajawa town to Ertejun Tarawatu. It's a nice waterfall in here. There's a few waterfalls out in this area, but we kind of thought that this one looks best out of all. You can already see the waterfall all the way there in the distance. On the way down, we've noticed on that rock, there's loads of bee nests, beehives. I don't know if it's bees or hornets, but they are massive and there's loads of them. Wow, look at this beautiful place in the middle of the jungle. Pretty steep stairs. Watch out, don't hold on to this. Looks a little bit sketchy, needs maintenance. I mean, look at all this rail. This is really amazing, wow. This is like heavenly paradise. 
Look at this place. Yeah. This looks really epic, man. Sunbeams coming down through the I know, right? Just like in the movies. So nice. I love that little bridge. Wow. That looks really cool. Where is everyone? That's good. This is epic. All to ourselves. This is awesome. And people come here to camp. I can see like some remains from a fire. Pretty cool spot, hey? Like kind of in the shade away from the sun and it just feels so spiritual in, in a way in here just like you the nature the sounds of the water and this beautiful view of the waterfall but it's so refreshing proper mountain water after driving and getting burned in the sun this feels so rewarding absolutely amazing <sighs> paradise yeah. paradise on earth in indonesia so on the way back we decided to take a tiny little detour to see the other waterfall soa soro and that's the waterfall looks pretty cool maybe not as epic as the other one but still looks like a nice little place to swim you probably get like a bit more of a shower in here oh, there's a cave right we're not going there <laughs> looks cool so we didn't manage to make it to see the viewpoint in the evening because it actually got really cloudy the weather is constantly changing, so it did clear up a little bit and we did get a sneak peek of that huge Toblerone looking mountain. Bajawa town itself is actually really beautiful too. Great place to spend the evening. It's so peaceful, surrounded by mountains and greenery. And there is so much to do in this area as well. And this morning before we leave Bajawa, we've actually come up to Wolobobo Hills Vector which is the viewpoint we were going to go to last night. It's clear skies in the morning, so it's a good time to come. Pretty cool. We're above everything up here. And there's absolutely no one around. We're literally the only people at this viewpoint right now. It seems like this area was surrounded by active volcanoes. Next to mountain area, there's also like a massive crater that I feel like it used to be an active volcano back in days like many many years ago and now it's just like a nice valley and there's like a path you can also hike there as well this whole area is just unbelievable you know if we had more time we'd probably stay here longer but it is day four and we have to crack on with the road today we're driving all the way to Moni a small town in the mountains home to the unique natural wonder of Kelimutu we have a long drive ahead of us, but the great road and epic views in Flores definitely make it worthwhile. So after driving the whole day through the mountains, we have finally arrived to the coast, the Bluestone Beach, and it looks absolutely blue. It looks amazing though. And we just stopped for some lunch halfway through our day and we ordered some really nice seafood. Yeah, it's one of the best areas for this kind of thing. What have we got, Maria? Right. So it? first of all, we have it's called super spicy crab. Apparently this is super spicy. It, that's what it says on the menu, super spicy crab. I'm instantly gonna try a bit of this super spicy sauce. Oh, oh super spicy. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, I love it though. And then we've got this Viking looking hammer. That's for the she crab, said it, I for think. For opening yeah. the crab. And then we have some sweet and sour shrimp. Look wow. at the size of the shrimp. That's crazy. Lovely. I'm gonna try this sauce as well. Oh, it evens out like that spicy crab. It really spicy is the crab, but I love it though. Don't know about Olivia, but can't wait to dig in to be honest. And the craziest thing is that this was like three dollars per dish. Three dollars for a crab yeah, dish. Yeah, three or four dollars. This is absolute peanuts for seafood. It's probably the cheapest seafood we've ever had in Southeast Asia. Okay. Usually we get those like clippers. Yeah, but not a works. hammer this time. It works. Look, um, it's open. There we go. Get some crab meat. Yum. Hello. Hello. 
No, thank you. Thank you. Wow, it's amazing. It tastes really good. <laughs> Yum. Oh man. Let's dig in and then crack on with the road. So as you can probably see, some of the beach is actually more black than blue. There's black sand underneath the blue rocks. And the reason there's not as many blue stones as before is because they're so beautiful, they've taken them off the beach and there's piles and piles of them on the side of the road. I think they sell them or use them to build things and make things, which is fair play. But yeah, it's still really nice to come here, have some seafood by the beach and enjoy the views. Now we're gonna keep driving. Still got a way to go. Let's do this. Can't wait to be honest. This road trip is getting better. Day four is as amazing as any other day. So let's crack on. We're just driving. The locals told us to turn around. I don't know what's going on. I think they're excavating over there. Because it seems like there's a lot of dust. So I'm guessing we're waiting for the excavators to go past. You see all the buses and cars are gonna Let's stop wait in here. here. So we have to wait here, yeah. I don't know how long we're waiting here for. I thought it was a landslide at first, but... I thought it was a volcano, like an active volcano from the distance, but there's loads of like smokes, clouds of dust, um, and probably waiting for like an excavator to go past and then we'll be able to drive, continue our drive. Still got a, a bit of a drive. I was kind of hoping that we're gonna get there. It was in a good mood, but yeah, it just happens sometimes on a road trip. You just have to stop and wait for a bit. But he's literally running. I mean, messed up because I think it's gonna get really, really dusty. <laughs> Alright, we're waiting for something. What's that what it's doing? Oh, it was a landslide. Basically, it was just a landslide, and I don't say mean just a landslide. It was a freaking landslide, so that could have killed us. Oh, is that another landslide? Sit, sit, sit. panicking. Oh, look at that. There's another huge landslide right now. Go, 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 Should we keep driving or? I think we should keep going back. Ah. I hope everybody's okay. Yeah, there was another landslide just now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's okay? Okay, okay. We're trying again, round two. Hopefully it goes okay this time. Let's hope there's no landslide falling on I us this time. I just want to get through as fast as possible. So I think so does everybody else. In a landslide, we finally made it to Ende, a large town on the south coast of Flores. But with not much light left in the day, we had to crack on with the road back up into the mountains to get to our final destination for the day. Seeing a lot of motorbikes wearing raincoats because it was probably raining, they're all soaking wet and we're still covered in dust. We actually avoided the entire storm, which is pretty cool. It's a few drops here and there, but like, I'm absolutely dry and covered in dust still. We nearly got caught in a landslide, but skipped the storm, so 
positives and negatives and everything, right? The thing we love most about driving across Flores is the landscape changes constantly, so you're never bored driving here. In just one day, we'd already seen beautiful rocky blue beaches, desert-like roads, and the greenest, lushest countryside in the mountains that was so breathtaking, we just had to stop for a moment and take it all in. Driving all the way from Ende to Kelimutu area, a village called Moni was absolutely beautiful. And right now we're at our guest house. We're heading to our room, which is all the way up here. Having a bit of a problem with our 4G. We didn't have a map to get here, so we were just asking loads of locals because apparently it doesn't work in this area, the internet we have, or it ran out or something, and there's no Wi-Fi in this place. So we're gonna have to maybe top up or something. But for now, we're just gonna check in and probably have a shower. Woo! Oh, these steps are huge. Look at this area guys, look where we are, this is our view, yeah, this Boom. is the room. look at this, wow, yeah, <laughs> MTV Cribs, how much did we pay for this? 11, 10, 11 pound, maybe 10, 10 pound That's not bad, eh? Breakfast as well. Very good, yeah, nice, yeah. awesome, this is really good. This is gonna be an absolute chiller, especially when you have the balcony. Mahakari Lodge. <laughs> yeah, Mahakari Lodge represent. And you have all the view. Very nice, yeah, this is gonna be an enjoyable stay. Man, can't wait to stay. We ought to stay in <laughs> We treated ourselves to a cheeky beer and an enormous burrito that kept our bowels as active as the volcano we were about to visit. It's day five in Flores and this morning we only had four hours sleep to be able to come to the Kelimutu National Park. Kelimutu is basically a volcano with three crater lakes that are constantly changing color. A really unique place in Indonesia and we're about to go and see it at sunrise. Lakes are sacred to the locals living in the area and are believed to be the resting place for the souls of the dead. Scientifically, the unpredictable color changes of the lake are due to chemical reactions triggered by volcanic activity and certain minerals. However, locals believe they change color when the spirits are restless. The sunrise looks absolutely epic, this is unbelievable. There's three crater lakes, all different colours, but we just turned around, we were so distracted by the sunrise, we turned around, there's like a horde of monkeys heading straight for the, everyone. Look, they're all running down the mountain. They're like, the tourists are here, guys, let's go, let's go. Let's go get some breakfast. Luckily, we didn't bring any food with us or water this morning planned ahead so keep that in mind if you're gonna come here look at that oh my god is it coming they're not going for people no they're going for something oh, else no, there's there's one like there. loads of them come up but they're going for something else there's one there though it's coming up behind us so we went up to the top viewpoint and it was actually way less busy than we thought it was going to be there was maybe about 10 15 people up there and a monkey so it wasn't that bad we just come back to the first lake and the sun's kind of up now, but this is still in the shade. But when it's fully up, I feel like that's the colour that it would look like. It would be way more lit up than it is right now. A lot more saturated and probably quite beautiful to come here during the day too. I do think that this whole experience depends on the weather. I feel like if there was loads of clouds, it might look a little bit different, like the sun reflections and stuff like that. It was still really good, you know, but I wonder what it would be like with loads of clouds. I wonder what it'd be like during the day. I wonder what it'd be like during sunset you know so you kind of have to stay here for quite a while and you know see all these things but mm. in our case it was just nice and clear you could see some clouds in the distance it was pretty lovely but we are quite time struck so we're gonna have to crack on with our road trip and you know it is today day five yeah is it five uh 
I'm losing count, to be honest. I'm losing <laughs> yeah, I think it's day five, you know, but day five, pretty damn cool. You know, it's a cool way to start our day. We almost halfway through our road trip. And today we're going to be heading all the way to the beach side. Actually, I miss the beach, you know, get some sand and stuff like that. Some sun. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. It's still a bit of a road trip today, but I think the destination is going to be totally worth it. Bye. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, Thank, thank you. you so much for the big breakfast. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We've left Moni next to Kelimutu and we've drove about an hour down out of the mountains and we're heading along the main road towards Mount Mary today. But on the way we've decided to stop off at Coca Beach which is a very beautiful beach. It's quite well known here in Flores. And we're nearly there. The road's a bit bumpy. The road's a bit bumpy. I, I hope it's worth it. And you know, it says very beautiful. Let's actually see how beautiful. So we just parked up the bike. Uh, it's relatively busy. It is the weekend. It's like Friday today. And the beach though looks freaking amazing. It is absolutely gorgeous. Overall, I think it was worth the little five minute detour to be honest. The beach is just beautiful. Like we haven't seen a beach a nice beach like that in a while so this is quite nice for a change um, blue water white sand i know i've got shoes on right it's like criminal to wear shoes on a beach but not sure how long we're gonna be here for might take them off for a cheeky second why not oh so refreshing wow I think this beach is quite popular because of the shape of it. It's like two twin beaches. It looks really epic. But there's so many more beaches coming up here in Flores. In fact, we haven't even started with the beaches, so it's only gonna get better from here. There's a tree in the road. Uh, full enough, probably. Well, I think it's way better than the landslide yeah. yesterday. So I'll at least it's just it. a tree, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll take that long either, no. you know? There's a few people waiting here, but that's about it. <laughs> made it to Maumere, the biggest town in Flores located towards the northeastern coast of the island. Not so far now from our destination, but we had to have a little split stop because we were just burnt. And literally all my shoulders, all burnt. So we're gonna have <laughs> some food, I know, right? We're gonna have some food, a cold drink, and then it's just another like 25 kilometers or something left. And I'm gonna chill by the beach. Let's go check in, find the owners, and relax. Hello. 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 Can we check in somewhere? Yeah. Today was only three hours drive, but it felt way longer than yesterday for some reason. Well, I think it's because we haven't really slept much because we had to wake up so early for Kelimutu. This is our bungalow in here. Got a nice little mosquito net. I'm guessing that's the bathroom. What? How do I open it? There we go. Sick. Quite nice, light and spacious. And you can see the sea. Yeah, beachfront. Of the little balcony. This is ideal. This is all we need. This is literally perfect. So it is the end of the day. We actually been chilling here, fell asleep a little bit, had a couple beers and stuff. And now we're about to try some local moke. I've got the moke, like a special moke with arak, I think. Alina was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna have any alcohol. So she's, she got like the banana. local one. Yeah, it's like fruity. Apparently this drink only exists in Flores Island. So basically it's from here. How is it? Tastes like banana juice. Yeah. Mm. Mine is with Arak, but I can see that there's not much of the actual drink. What happened there? I give you all Arak and no juice, go for it. Oh. Oh. Really, really strong. Wow. Is it just the Arak? Oh. I'm actually already looking wavy, but yeah. Mario's getting drunk tonight. <sighs> nah, not really. I'm gonna have this and go to sleep. Like, as you can see, my face is absolutely red, burned from the sun. Like, I'm actually in a bit of an agony, yeah. knackered, tired. We needed an afternoon slash evening off. Yeah. Just not traveling anywhere. 100%. It's definitely so. an exhausting five days so far. Can't wait for another day. Tomorrow's gonna be one hell of a day, but tonight we're just gonna rest in peace.
Just a moment ago I went for a little snorkel in the area, it was quite nice, I seen some corals and then it got a little bit cloudy and windy and you could see it wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be but today is another day and we're still keeping it positive. We're gonna have some local food in here. I wonder if they have any left though, they have a bunch of fish. Yeah, two soups and then two buffets each. This is gonna be one hell of a feast. Mm. Yeah. It's tuna steak. Oh, nice. That's really good. I think you can get some good seafood here in Malmere. Thank you. How much was it? So it was like 60,000, about like four bucks for no. this whole like two massive yeah. fish steaks. Wow. Pretty damn good, man. Pretty damn good. Can't complain. Barely could finish it. And yeah, I blowed it probably for the rest of the day now. <laughs> Today we were actually planning to go to these islands that are just off from Malmere. Apparently they're really beautiful beaches, great snorkeling spots, but Unfortunately, we found out that you do have to book a day in advance to take a boat there with like a local fisherman. We didn't do that and we're actually leaving here tomorrow. We're cracking on with the road. So we can't do that this time around. The weather wasn't too great today. It kind of rained a little bit and was a bit cloudy for a while. But overall, I'd say there isn't actually that much to do in Malmere as a tourist. There is a few diving spots around here. It's very popular with divers. Other than that, we haven't really found much else to do. So we're probably just gonna chill for today. We kind of needed a day off the road trip really, but tomorrow is gonna be the biggest day so far driving. So I hope that Mario is ready. Day seven in Flores. We already packed up, ready to go on our bike. It's gonna take us about six hours of non-stop. So with breaks, probably like eight to nine hours of driving to get there. But we are actually gonna get somewhere nice. It is the 17 islands, one of the most beautiful places here in Flores. I cannot wait, but before that, a lot of dust. Are you ready for it? I don't know. Today we're leaving the Trans Flores Highway and driving across the north of the island along the coast. The road conditions here are definitely the worst we've experienced on this trip so far, but the beautiful views of crystal clear beaches and remote villages along this road made the drive completely worth it especially when we know we're seeing a side of Flores that not many other travelers do. Excuse me, mister. What would you like, more? Can I order some tofu? Thank you. Okay. Uh, -huh. uh so... What do you want to eat? Uh, I'm gonna have, uh, I don't know, there's loads of choice. I'm gonna have probably jackfruit curry. Jackfruit. Yeah, and then uh -huh. tofu. Uh -huh. Nasi puti. Nasi puti. Yeah. So we've just stopped about halfway on our road trip today. The road so far has been a little bit bumpy in parts, but overall, just a really nice road trip so far. It's gone faster than I expected. Yes, really good so far, not too bad. Uh, but we have stopped for some food and we were looking where to stop. There was like a wedding. There wasn't many restaurants open. And we just found this one restaurant here. There's no people. Absolutely lovely food. Just managed to choose the food ourselves. The people are really friendly. And now we're just having some jackfruit fruit curry which is next level and yeah we have some other veggie stuff so it's all like a vegetarian which just lighten the stomach for for today whilst you're on the road and yeah just gonna crack on with this food and then another hundred and something kilometers so today is mainly just driving all day <laughs> me and Oliver playing this game called the zig dog every time you see a dog you say zig dog and you know who gets more dogs <laughs> and we were playing too much that we just turned the wrong way the map froze and now we're like <laughs> going the wrong way towards Indy for a while. Oh <laughs> Too much zig dog. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Not even looking where we're going. And I'm like, this the, the kilometers are increasing. How is it increasing? The like, road trip is already long it's enough. getting longer and longer. Like, okay, we turn around. Okay, oh Zij, I'm still winning five six with zig dog. Zig dog. <laughs> so we're back on the right road, but now different challenge. It's raining. And it seems like it's gonna be raining for a little while still. What do you think? Should we just crack on anyway? So I feel I like know. we're gonna be following the cloud. It's up to you, driver. Shot caller. I think we should go. Go, 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 go! The rain has stopped because it doesn't really rain that much in tropical countries, which is nice. And now we're outside by the beach again. Which is pretty cool. I'll, I'm, I'm so glad that the change is so fast, you know, from rainy forest to a sunny beach again. Oh. After hours.
hours of driving, we finally made it to Ryung. We were really tired, so we just had a beer and dinner and an early night. So it's day eight in Flores, and today is gonna be one hell of a day. For the past two days, we were just absolutely chilling or driving all day. And today, we're about to do an awesome boat tour around the 17 Islands Marine National Park. So first up on this boat trip is actually the most exciting bit, the, the bit that I really wanted to visit. It's the Bat Island. Yeah, and you can only see in the distance a whole lot of bats. Basically it looks like a tree, well many trees with brown like, leaves. Yeah, black trees or something. But it's not brown leaves, it's basically just a bunch of bats, hundreds if not thousands of bats hanging on those trees. And these aren't any kind of bats, these are the flying foxes, the biggest bats in the world. So the small ones eat insects and yeah. these eat uh, fruit. So the bats kind of come in waves, chill for a minute, fly for a minute, and it's generally like thousands of them. They are so majestic. The view from here absolutely feels like in a Jurassic Park or something like that. Seriously, man, this is absolutely next level experience. So far, the first ever island was absolutely mind blowing. What do you think, Olivia? Epic. Still, still looking at it, can't yeah, get over it's it. It's just like so many, it looks like tiny little birds or, or bees, but actually yeah. they're so freaking big. I'm not sure I even want to see them up close. What do you think, what's the size of them if you, you had to show them in your hands? Like how, how big do you think they are? This big? About this, yeah. That's insane, that's really? a big ass bat. Yeah, it's something like that. Mental. So we just stopped by this beautiful paradise silence to do a little bit of snorkeling. See if we can catch some marine life on the camera. Starfish? Uh, probably can't see it, but we need to go under the water. After traveling around Southeast Asia for a few years and snorkeling in many locations, this was one of the first times we had witnessed such well-preserved marine life. There was an abundance of coral of all types and colors, and the amount of fish and other creatures was overwhelming. We even found Nemo guys, which was definitely a highlight of the day so far. for a while we headed to one of the many islands nearby to relax and have a fish barbecue on the beach. Ah, uh, this is so nice. I think this is where we're going to be having lunch. These cute decorations. Feels like we're on Robinson Crusoe's yeah. island. So far the day is going super well. I can't believe we saw all these fish and we even saw an actual Nemo fish for the first time. That was absolutely epic. This is barracuda, nice. Uh, looks amazing, looks delicious. Oh, you got everything, vegetables, noodles, rice, fresh salad and everything. Fish caught by the captain. Nice. <laughs> Here in the, the nice view, literally like the paradise food, eh? Just, just like getting, in the movies. I'm getting a little bit of everything. Just like in the movies. It's definitely enough. <laughs> we absolutely smashed the food. Then we went for a swim and just took in the beauty of the islands here before going snorkeling again in another spot. It definitely wasn't as impressive as the first time, but we did see a sea snake, which was a little scary considering they're one of the most venomous snakes in the world. If you were bit by one, the venom could kill a human within 30 minutes. Luckily, we didn't bother him too much, so we get to continue this adventure. So the 17 Islands Marine National Park was absolutely amazing experience. One of our favorite things here in Flores Island it was just absolutely beautiful but we had to leave a little bit earlier because the rain was catching up as you probably know it's like the beginning of monsoon season here in indonesia so you kind of had to leave a little bit early but overall captain thank you so much for the experience really appreciate it. 
Uh, name Lucky. Lucky. Lucky, yeah. So we're gonna leave all of his information in the description below of this video so you can find his WhatsApp because he really makes some really, really cheap prices as well. You know, if you wanna save some money, definitely call this guy and he'll take you on a nice tour. And the food was absolutely amazing. Apparently, he cooks it himself as well. But yeah, what a day, man. I look literally high on life. How are you feeling, Olivia? Happy. The snorkeling was amazing. Probably some of the best we've ever done in Southeast Asia. Not that we've been everywhere in Southeast Asia, but it was one of the best so far. I'd say the best so far. Yeah. The best. Because to be honest, the, the amount of corals and we saw the Nemo fish the variety, several times. The variety. Yeah, so many amazing. things. Like, wow, this the is snake. unbelievable. The sea snake freaked me out a little bit, but yeah, cool to see the it. sea snake was pretty like terrifying. But come on, yeah. I mean, you know, it's part of the adventure. So, so yeah, what a day, yeah, what a day for a change. So day nine, we're back on the road. This time we're driving all the way to Reok. We're staying right by the beach, which is pretty cool. Another beach day, which is pretty exciting. The road trip's not too crazy today. It's only like three hours drive, but apparently halfway through our drive, there's loads of Komodo dragons. And yes, you hear that right, Komodos. Okay. Local petrol station. As we continue our trip across the north of Flores, we are blown away by the beauty of this island. Every day we are met with adventurous roads, a diverse landscape and endless paradise beaches that have kept us on the edge of our motorbike seat for every moment of this trip so far. All we are wondering now is where everyone is and why more people aren't visiting this underrated gem of an island in Indonesia. Apparently, this sign says that there are Komodos in this area. And you know the Komodos from the Komodo Island? The massive, like a prehistoric yeah. ancient lizards, the biggest lizards in the world, the Komodos. It's I wonder if saying, you can see one here. It's saying drive 40 kilometers an hour so you don't hit one. We actually saw a dead lizard on the road earlier as well, so. It was like a monitor, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, gotta be careful driving here because they just run out of nowhere. So, gotta go slowly. So after three hours drive, we have arrived at this uh, resort. What's the name of the resort again? Uh, Tompori Resort. There, there you go. And Olivia's already having loads of pictures here with loads of local kids being famous in here. Uh, say hello to YouTube. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're just looking about around different rooms because all of them are different prices, different shapes, different sizes. There's something like that. Pretty nice and simple. But the good thing is it's right by the coast, right by the beach over there. So I'll see what Olivia thinks about this one as well. She's just having some photo shoots right now. So eventually we checked in in this bungalow right here. And it's really nice because there's literally no other people, but the people who own the place and just us, like absolutely no tourists. So we have pretty much the whole place to ourselves. It is absolutely chilling, nice and quiet. Loads of palm trees and a lovely beach just right here. Absolutely chilling. And apparently this beach stretches out all the way around this mountain. So there's a whole lot of beaches to explore. Pretty cool little spot. Loads of little bungalows to chill, like the one behind me. But there's loads of like fishing boats in here as well. So we decided to go all the way around this mountain there because there's some paradise beaches in there. Let's go and check it out for ourselves. Not, not sure how much of a paradise beach is, but there's only one way to find out. I right, guess we're driving through a little villagey area, a couple houses to get to this beautiful beach. It's called Ketebi Beach, Ketebi beach I think. Right, so this is the beach, the paradise looking beach. And to be honest, guys, it looks pretty paradise. There are obviously some cars going because it's our main road, but I mean, this looks idyllic, right? Really crystal clear water. And all this little beach just here. It looks proper nice. I quite like it. Look at wow, that. It looks like sand. powder. It literally, it's, it's like, it's like powder. chalk. Wow. White, sandy Such beach. a white, white sand, eh? Proper like powder. So Yeah, sure. Uh, with a beautiful beach. One, two, three. Maybe not with me, maybe you two only. <laughs> this is probably one of the most beautiful beaches here in Flores Island. The only thing is that it needs a little bit of a cleaning. So uh, the sea obviously washes off a lot of plastic, which is like a general problem on this planet. So if you actually take a closer look, there's loads of plastic everywhere, as well as floating in the water. You see loads of plastic there as well. It's just like a a global problem basically it is a bit of a shame you know but it is what it is although 
on that side towards our hotel there's a few more beaches that we're gonna go and check it out as well maybe they'll be a little bit different but if you clean this beach right here i believe that there's a lot of people would be coming all the way from loban Vajo to chill on this beach because it's not even that far and it's totally worth it just needs a tiny bit of cleaning because it is really nice absolutely chilling no people and the sand is it's just like powder i've never seen sand so nice before the water is so calm so clear Perfect swimming spot. Mario was being a smart ass trying to drive up to the beach. I told him not to because the sand's too deep. So now we just get to watch him try and... Yeah, that actually, he did that better than I thought. Yeah. Damn it. Of course, I bro, driver out. here. We just found this little cafe. We thought it was actually abandoned, but there's a guy here and he said, yeah, he's open. So it's right by the beach. There's a beach on that side and a beach on that side. Oh, and this nice. is his place. Very nice place. Yeah. Looks like he has some parties in here. Yeah. Your house here? You live here? Yes. Your house? Yeah, yes. Wow, proper nice beach house. Yeah. Imagine just living here, man. We have this garden right on the beach. Yeah, what do you know about paradise? Oh, yeah, he has two beaches. Yeah. Much. This beach in general is so next level. I mean, have a look, man. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mario. Oh, Mario. oh nice from America Latin? No, no, no. From Lithuania. <laughs> Lithuania. 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 Yeah. Europe. Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After having a nice conversation with the man and having some really nice coffee, we just decided to stay here a little bit longer. As always, we love to change our plans last minute. And you know, it kind of gives you the sense of freedom to be able to change those plans whenever you want. So we're staying here another night. Because we haven't really explored all the beaches and there's so many and we kind of just want to spend a whole day on the beach, you know. So tonight we're just going to stay here, probably chill, get some food in a bit. Yeah, and tomorrow we're actually going to go and meet the man that we were just with because he wants to show us around a little bit of his area. So that'll be really fun to see. Yeah, I really would like to go and see this church. We managed to capture the church on the drone and it looks literally from like a movie or something like that and he knows the priest in there i mean he's from there he is from flores he spent here all his life so going with the local you know to explore would be really cool and he said by the way just to make sure so you know that i'm not charging anything i just want to invite you you know to come along with me so that's gonna be pretty cool looking forward to it so 24 hours later i'm back in the same spot to meet the local man uh i'm gonna go and see if he's in hello, hello how are you doing if you want, give, we go together. You buy your motor. Yeah. Go there. Okay. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Sounds good. So we just drove about five minutes of his place. It is like a little bush in here. Apparently, there's like a cool beach spot. Is it like a beach we're going to? Yeah. Nice. Right. We have would have never found this myself. Water go down. We can go around here. Ah, oh, you can go even further when the water is down. On a low tide. Oh, nice place. Uh, we try, yes. We try. Maybe we can pass the water there. Okay. And you can see uh, beside here. So I take a stone from here. Oh, you have to build your house? Yes. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you... uh. If from there, we can uh, see uh, the big stone. Oh yeah. On the water. Oh, okay. On the, on the sea. Do you think this is made by people? I'm not sure. Uh, at that place, they like. They want to swimming. Yeah, swimming. And after when they jump, I go back. <laughs> <laughs> I am played by the shark. Shark. So I was saying that. People don't come and swim here because this uh, this area is very well known for sharks and they yeah. come pretty close, four meters to the, from the shore because it, it goes like a really deep water here. So gotta watch out for sharks. We're not gonna attempt to swim in here. <laughs> you don't wanna get eaten by a shark. I mean, you probably just better listen to the locals, you know. Uh, stone like this, and I put. Oh, you build it with yeah. it yeah but yeah if any of you geologists who are watching this video right now you guys think that this is nature these corners like that i mean have a look at this rock here you can see like very very precise cut 
and it just like goes like that as well. Do you think that's nature? To me, it looks like it's been cut down by people many, many years ago. But you know, I might be wrong. Nature is kind of crazy. You never know. But if you do know, I'd, I'd appreciate your opinion on this because what if it is remains from an ancient civilization? Man, <laughs> you never know. Here's another one. I mean, look at that. Look at this cut. So precisely cut. It generally looks like it's man-made, right? Like this is crazy. So we didn't manage to walk all the way we wanted to go because. The water is a little bit too high. We have to come a little bit early in the morning when the tide is low. So we kind of have to turn around and come back. But it's really nice, you know, to come around and see the local area, especially where all the sharks are because it is the danger zone. So, yeah. So thank you so much for showing me yes. around. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. We really loved taking it slow for a couple of days in this quiet corner of Flores. But it was time to enjoy one last sunset here before getting back on the road and continuing our adventure. We're back on the road today, it's day 11 and right now we're headed through the beautiful mountains, loads of little mountain villages, it's a really nice area. And we're actually heading towards a Todo village one of the iconic sites to see here in Flores Island it is a long road trip today probably the longest day driving so yeah here we go day 11 in Flores Island I start this game every morning and then Mario just takes it way too far I mean she always starts sneakily not saying they'll be playing the game and then she goes this dog this dog and I'm like just woken up having to drive and then I'm having to catch up, obviously, with the zig dog. So, you know, buckle up, because I'm going to zig dog the hell out of you. Super busy around here. There's some sort of market in here, I think. Or like, is it like a food store? Oh, post. Post office. I don't know. Is it something. like a payday, a tax day? No clue. A lovely little traditional village. See a lot of people wearing these like traditional outfits. Just not for like a celebration, just like a daily outfit, you know what I mean? Are they real? No, they're not even real. Oh my god! <laughs> that was real birds! They got me, man! <laughs> so just over an hour's drive from Rutang, we took a little detour to see the traditional Toda village. We kind of saved it for the very last day of this road trip and really kind of wait to go and see. You know, we've seen these houses all over internet and we chose the Todo village for a few reasons. This is one of two of the last villages that have these unique traditional houses in them. It's one of the only places you can see them in all the Flores. We've got to go and report that we're here in this little hut here. Good morning. 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 How are you? Good, a little bit tired yeah. driving all day but yeah coming from Rioc. Uh, Rioc? Rioc, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We drive all around Flores. Welcome to Torofilis. For the interest we hear, includes the saru, scarf and something on your head. That's okay. 60,000 per person here. Okay. So to go into the village, we have to wear yeah. traditional sarong. Got into a little bit of the <laughs> traditional swag in here. Uh, we are about to explore the traditional Todo village. And apparently this village is about 500 years old and is the first ever Mangarai people village. So it's the first one ever. It's older than Vallerebo. And yeah, like I said, it's 500 years old, man. That's a long time. Cool. This Mangrai village is famous for the cone-shaped houses. You probably see them on photos when you look up Flores. Pretty iconic. Looking at them right now. I mean, this is what we're looking at. They're a lot bigger than you think, right? Yeah, they look really, really nice. Like, looks proper like tribal, you know? Stuff that you see in documentaries and stuff. So there's the original stairs up walkway. walkway yeah into the village you have like a circle shape in the middle and it looks like a grave in the middle though. yeah it must be someone important the it. middle looks proper like ancient uh, there, there are some like lamp posts if that wasn't there you really think you're, like you're traveling back in time so we just did a few selfies in here right outside the king's house you know you gotta do it before you leave the place it's like you're already wearing all the outfits and things like that you know you gotta have to take some shots it's kind of have to happen right yeah i mean look at us look at where we are gotta do it man so the house in the very middle is the king's house where the king's house used to be so we're just gonna 
entered the main house right now. So when we went into the house, we had to sit down and they did like a ceremony where they ask the ancestors permission for taking pictures and filming or something. So we couldn't film that actual process or in the house until afterwards. Have to give a donation, whatever you choose to give, and then you can film and take pictures. Not really sure what the reason for that is, but apparently even locals and people that come have to do that. But while they were doing it, there was like music blasting from one of the houses in the background, so it did kill the vibe a little bit, didn't really feel that authentic. I mean, the guide was pretty helpful. He gave us like information, a little bit of explanation about the history of the Mangarai people and stuff. It feels like it's not obviously the same experience as it would be maybe in Vallarobo because there's like a lot of, you know, like cables, bikes, different kind of buildings. So it was hard to take some really nice shots, you know, but yeah, maybe it was really nice long time ago. Overall, like the experience, yeah, maybe it is worth it, you know, to come and visit if you haven't seen it before. Uh, from a personal experience, since we have traveled in Southeast Asia for quite a bit, little while and we've seen a lot of traditional villages, you know, I would say like, yeah, it's, it's all right. This one is kind of made for tourism, yeah, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And we're able as well, obviously you can get the shots without the, modern buildings in it's just the traditional houses yeah. which looks beautiful and it's in the mountains but there is also quite a hefty entry fee mm. to go up there and stay there so it's up to you if you want to pay for that and do that experience yeah. we've heard good things we've heard bad things i liked wearing the headdress though i enjoyed that yeah Cute i really outfit. suited you you look like a pocahontas <laughs> it? guys i think we i think we took the wrong road back looking like this right now not looking very smooth but the views are getting better. Classic. <laughs> We're on a random tiny village road in the mountains. It was really bumpy back there. Not very nice to drive on. It's improved now, but it's also just started to rain. Don't know when we're gonna get back onto the main road from here, but the sky is not looking like it's happy at all. If it starts raining here, yeah, this is just like a, a, a bobsleigh track. Generally, just like so slippery. So we're trying to get out of here as soon as we can. We're stepping on it. It already feels like a bobsleigh track. And it's raining. It's raining. <laughs> but at least we got to the main road. Yeah. Good timing, wow. Did not want to be driving on there in the rain. Yeah, but now we're in the rain. Don't really want to be driving it here in the rain either. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if we're going towards the rain or we're moving away from the rain. It looks like towards. Definitely towards. Wait, the locals putting it on. We need to stop and put it on. remind me of why I'm moving out of Liberty City. I'm going to Vice City where I don't get eaten either jack. Then you gotta walk around there. The rain started to get a lot worse and we got soaked from head to toe with the coats not providing much cover at all. The mud was melting into a river and merging with the road and overtaking trucks in these conditions is not a lot of fun. But after just pushing through on the bike, we managed to outdrive the storm. So we managed to escape the rain, driving towards La Bombaggio, and we just came to our favorite local restaurant here in La Bombaggio to have some food because we were absolutely starving. Haven't eaten since Kantang. We did it. That we made That's it. it. We did it. Wow, what a trip. Wow. You can see from our faces we look a bit tired. We literally just got back, went to the hotel, got changed out of wet clothes, put on flip-flops and we just realized our feet are a different color to the rest of our body because we have worn shoes the whole week. But yeah, overall the trip was absolutely beautiful. I don't even know where to start but 
you know as a driver who, who was driving the motorbike it was absolutely lovely experience because the roads are so nice this there wasn't much traffic or anything like that so if you are planning to do something like that or just planning a road trip anywhere else the roads are really nice and wide a lot of things to see you know we have actually skipped quite a few things as well because we only had 11 days but if you came here you could probably have things to do for an entire month here in Flores it's a, it is a beautiful island and every single time we'd see locals everybody would say hello how are you hello miss hello mister like the whole trip many many times a day first I was like are they being honest maybe this is it some sort of agenda but eventually I realized yeah that's just how people are they were really excited to see us you know we don't really see that in other Southeast Asian countries, to be honest, where everybody just constantly, hello, 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 old people, young people, you know, kids and grandparents, like, it was just incredible experience. It's been really nice to see all the smiles we got as we were driving around. Definitely some of the friendliest people we've met in Indonesia. And I had a great time. It was a really good road trip. Yeah, what a trip. 100% suggest to anyone to do this type of road trip. Who knows, we might even come back and do it again at some point because like I mentioned earlier, there's so many things to do and see. We only went all the way past Maumere. Didn't go all the way to like the edge because of the limit of our time, you know, but there's so many more little things you can explore in Flores. Feel so nostalgic thinking about it. I already miss it. Yeah, I can't believe this, this went so fast but our food has arrived and we're absolutely hungry. Can't wait to dig in into this local dish here. So <sighs> hungry. Yeah, probably last dinner in Flores. Yeah, and then tomorrow we're leaving Flores. We're going to our next island, so probably gonna see you in the next adventure.